Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Mr. Peckery again. Today we're going to be doing some more maths and we're carrying on with fractions, but at this time we're moving on to comparing and ordering fractions. I'm going to try and help you by using resources and hopefully you can uh, sort of work along with this video at home. So the first thing we're going to look at is comparing fractions. So here I've got two different fractions. I've got one half and I've got two quarters. But on top of those, I've also got what they would look like if they were in a circle. So I've got one half of a circle here, and I have two quarters of a circle here too. But when I look at them, I can see that they're the same. And I know that one half and two quarters are the same, because if I simplified two quarters, I know that I can half both of those numbers because they're both multiples of two. So if I half the number two, I get one. And if I half the number four, I get two. So that's how I know that these are the same. We can do that with other numbers as well. So I'm gonna show you some more of those now. The next fractions that we're gonna be comparing are one third and two sixths. Now, they look different because they've got different numerators and denominators, but if I count up how many I need, I've made some resources just using paper. You can do it too if you want. You just need some paper and some scissors and a pen to write on them with. Uh, then you can start doing it yourself. So I'm going to get one third. I don't need two of them because I've only got one third here. And I need two six. Uh, I made sure that they were the same size. So I had two pieces of paper like this, and I made one into thirds, and I made one into sixths. You might need to measure it to get it accurate, but if you get an adult to help you, it won't be too hard. So I've got one third here, and I need two sixes. So I've got two sixths. Now, they don't look the same, but when I've got them as a shape, they look more similar. Because if I put them together, I know that they are the same size. Because just like we did with the halves, uh, 6 is a multiple of 3 and 2 is a multiple of 1 and when I look at the numbers more carefully I know that 6 is double 3 and 2 is double 1 so if I was to half my 2 I would get 1 and if I was to half my 6 I would get 3 so that would leave me with a fraction that is the same as a number so I have 2 6 and 1 third and they are the same the next one we're going to look at is similar to the other two. So my first fraction is one quarter. And my second fraction is two eighths. So I've made them into circles and I've got one quarter of a circle here and I have two eighths of a circle here. Now, if you look carefully, it's the same rule as last time. I know that two is double one and eight is double four. So if I half eight, I would get four. And if I half two, I would get one. And if I want to look at them as a shape, I've got my one quarter and my two eighths. So if I put them together, they should be the same size. Okay, so I know that one quarter and two eighths are the same. Just before I do any more maths, I just want to show you how you can make your own resources. So I've got my fractions and now I'm just going to make some resources for them. So I've cut out two circles that are exactly the same size. All I did was use something that's the same size so I can make two circles. And then I measured with my ruler to make my squares. I've put 12 centimeters on both sides. So now I've got two squares that are the same size. So for one side, I'm gonna make eighths. And for the other side, I'm gonna make quarters. So for my quarters, I know that with my square, I need to cut it in half and then cut it in half the other way. So I know that half of 12 is six. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other way. So I've got half of six. And now I know that my cut is gonna go through there. So if I want to be sure I can just use my ruler to draw a line down the middle and down the middle the other way as well. And then that'll, that'll make it easier for me to make my resources. So now I've got four squares 
they're exactly the same size. So I'm just going to cut those really, really quickly. And then I'll have four quarters of my square. Okay, and then after you've done that, you can write on them. So for example, on these, I'm going to write one quarter on each one. Now I'm not going to show you uh, me cutting the other ones just to save some time but I am going to show you how to measure the circle as well so my circle I don't know how um, big it is because I just used an uh, object to make the circle so I'm going to measure it now and I'm going to try and find the biggest uh, so basically the side that comes out the most which I think is there and I'm going to try and find the largest uh, point of my circle which I think is about here. So for me, it's about 14 and a half, which I know is about uh, seven, just a bit more than seven. So I'm gonna put a middle, put a, a dot in the middle there, and I'm gonna draw a line right there. And then that'll be half of my circle. And then I'm going to measure one more time this way. And it's the same amount, so I'm just going to find that number again, which is again about there. So all I need to do is draw one more line. And even if it's not perfect, it only needs to be as close as you can make it to that number. So don't worry if your uh, fractions aren't the perfect size as long as you know what fractions they're supposed to be. Okay, so once you've made them, you'll have something to work with. Okay, so now I've got four quarters of a circle and I've got four quarters of a square. Okay, and you can do the same thing for eighths but instead of uh, measuring it in half, actually you can measure it in half, and then you can measure the half again, because eight is double four, so you just need to make it into smaller pieces. Okay, so I've made my resources now, and I've got a circle for my quarters, and a square for my quarters, and I have a circle for my eighths, and a square for my eighths. So now I can compare them by looking at two different shapes. So for my quarter, I need to just keep one piece of my uh, circle because I only need one quarter. If it was two quarters, then obviously I would keep two. Or if it was three, I'd keep more. But I only need one. And it's the same for my square. I only have one quarter, so I'm only going to keep one of my square pieces. Now I need to look at my eighths. So I've got two eighths here, so I need to keep two of my eighths in my circle. So I've got two, and I need to keep two of the ones in my square as well. So now I've got two eighths in a square and two eighths in a circle, one quarter as a square and one quarter uh, as a circle. So now if I compare the shapes together, they should be the same. So let's look at the square first. I've got one quarter here, and if I have eighths here, two eighths, should be the same and it is as one quarter and I'm going to do the same with my quarter two eighths should be the same if I put it on top it should be and it is exactly the same as my one quarter okay so that is how you compare fractions if you want to do some harder ones like three quarters and six eighths you can work those out Okay, so all you need to do is find out which fractions are equivalent to each other. Okay, so that's a bit of a challenge. But now we're going to move on to some ordering fractions. Right, now we're going to move on to ordering fractions. So what I've done is I've got myself a whiteboard that I can use to do some working out. And I've also written down some random fractions that I'm going to try and put in order. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at them and I want to think, are any of them obviously bigger than the other ones? So straight away, I'm going to look at my one 
I know that this is my biggest number here because all of the other ones are fractions. So if I had a shape, it would be one whole. So it would be one whole circle, whereas all of my other fractions would be a part of it. So this one, I'm gonna put on the end of my table here, because I know it's the biggest. Now I need to look at the other ones. First, I wanna look at the ones that have one as a numerator. So I'm gonna move the ones that don't have that first, and I'm gonna put those in order. So I know that the rule is the smaller the denominator, the bigger my fraction is, but that's only if the numerator is the same. So I've got one as my numerator in each fraction, and I've got one half, one third, one quarter, and one eighth. Now my half is the biggest out of all of these fractions because my denominator is the smallest. So I'm gonna put that one closer to the biggest number. And then I know that my third is the next biggest because it's a smaller number than four and eight. And then I've got four and eight left and I know that my quarter is bigger than my eighth because one eighth is half of a quarter. So that's it for those numbers, but I've still got a few left that I made. I'm gonna take a look at them now. So one of them is three quarters one of them is two thirds, and the other one is three sixteenths. So let's do the three quarters first, okay? So I know that three quarters is bigger than one quarter, but I don't know if it's bigger than one third or one half. So I'm gonna try and simplify it, or make these ones bigger fractions to see if I can make it more similar to this. So if I have three quarters and one half, let's do that first, three quarters and one half. If I wanna compare those and order them, I need to look at the denominator in both. So I have a four here and a two here. Now if I times those together, I would get eight, okay? So my new denominator is going to be eight, okay? So I'm gonna have two fractions, and they're both gonna have eight as the denominator. Now, to get to eight from four, I need to double it. So that's exactly what I'm gonna to do to my three as well. So three doubled, or three times two, is six. So if I had eight as my denominator for this fraction, it would be six eighths. Now, to get to eight from number two, I need to times it by four. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do with my one. One times four is four. So if I look at them now, I have six eighths and four eighths. So I know that three quarters is bigger than one half, but I still don't know if it's bigger than one third. Or maybe I already know it's bigger than one third because one half is bigger than one third but let's work it out using that anyway so let's put our half back let's do that as if it was a different denominator now okay so now my denominators are four and three now if i times those together i would get four times three which makes 12. so i'm going to write 12 as my denominator twice because I've got two numbers, two fractions. Now, to get to 12 from four, I times it by three. So I need to do three times three, which makes nine. And to get to 12 from three, I need to times it by four. So now I need to do one times four, which is four. So now I've got nine twelfths and four twelfths. So I know that three quarters is bigger than one third. So now that I've done my working out, I know that three quarters is bigger than one half and it's bigger than one third. Now I've still got two numbers here and I want to do my two thirds next. Now I can compare it to my one third 
and I already know that two thirds is bigger than one third, but I don't know if it's bigger than one half and three quarters. So I'm gonna compare it to my one half first, and then I'll compare it to my three quarters to see if it's bigger than that one. So I've got two thirds and one half. Now the first thing I need to do is times my denominators together, which are three and two, which makes six. So I'm gonna have six as my denominator for both fractions. And now I need to look at what I used to get there. So to get to six from three, I times it by two. So I'm gonna do the same to this number. So two times two, I know, is four. And now I need to look at this fraction. To get to six, from two, I times it by three, so I'm gonna do the same to this number. And I know that one times three is three. So if I look at those fractions now, I have four sixths instead of two thirds, and three sixths instead of one half. So I know that two thirds is bigger than one half. So I would put that there. But I don't know yet if two thirds is bigger than three quarters, so we're just going to do it for that one as well. And then we'll only have one more fraction to do. So I need to look at my denominators again. And I've got 3 and 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. So that's going to be my denominator. Okay. Now I need to look at my other numbers. So to get to 12 from 3... I times it by 4. 3 times 4 is 12, so I need to do 2 times 4. 2 times 4, which is just 4 doubled, is 8. And to get to 12 from 4, I times it by 3. So I need to do 3 times 3, which is 9. So now, I know that 2 thirds is the same as 8 twelfths. And 3 quarters is the same as 9 twelfths, so I know that 3 quarters is bigger than 2 thirds now. So now I know where they go. Now I've only got one fraction left now, which is 3 sixteenths. Now straight away when I look at all of my fractions, I know that my denominator is really small. So maybe, no sorry, it's really big. So maybe I need to look at this one. So maybe I can find something in common between these two. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I've done for my other fractions. So the first thing I need to do is think, is there a number that these two might both be able to go into? Because if I try to do 8 times 16, I'll be here for a really long time. But instead, I can see that 8 can go into 16 twice. So I'm going to keep my denominator a 16, which means I don't need to change this fraction. So that's going to stay as 3 sixteenths, but I am going to change this one. So to get 8 to 16, I did 8 times 2. So I'm going to times 1 by 2 as well, which I know makes 2. So this fraction is the same as 2 sixteenths. And this fraction is the same as 3 sixteenths, because that's exactly what it is. So, this fraction is bigger than this fraction. So I should put it here. And just to be safe, I'm going to check if it's bigger or smaller than my 1 quarter. And then that should tell me that I've got my order right for my numbers. So this is the last one we're going to do, unless we find that this is bigger than this. And then I'll need to compare it with the other ones, but let's see. So, now I can't do 16 times 4 because that will take a really long time. So instead I'm going to think, can 4 go into 16? And I know that it can, because 4 times 4 is 16. So I'm going to keep my denominator as 16 again. And I don't need to change this fraction because it's already over 16. So I've got 3 over 16, and now I need to think about this number. So I need to get to 16 from 4, which I know is times by 4. So 4 times 4 is 16. I need to do the same for this now. So 1 times 4, I know is 4. So I'm going to keep that there. So 
3 16th stays the same, and 1 quarter is the same as 4 16th, which means that 1 quarter is bigger than 3 16th. So that means now that my order is right. So it might not look easy because of my denominators, because they're all different. I've got an 8 here, 16, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4. Okay, but you need to use this method to try and work out which fraction is bigger or smaller. That is the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something. Remember, you can make resources using the things that you have at home, or you can find some objects to count with or make fractions. Uh, if it helped you, or if you need more help, you can always leave a comment and ask me. But that's it for today, and thank you.